Welcome to the Real Mama Pod. I'm your host, Devin. And I'm your host, Kendra. We are real moms. Sharing real experiences. The, the things people, people don't, don't tell you. Hey, mama, hey. Hey, mama, hey. Hey, friend, how are you? I'm good. I'm happy about today's episode. Are you? Why? Because this is our 100th episode. <laughs> Can y'all believe that? I One really can't. 100. I cannot believe that we are at 100, which is crazy to me. That is wild. When we started this podcast mm-hmm. in March of 2022, right. we didn't know where the hell we were going. <laughs> we were short days. And 100, I mean, we knew we were going far, but the mm-hmm. fact that we have reached 100 episodes is wild to me. And we have not talked about the same topic on right. each episode. I was just about to say that. We haven't repeated a topic yet. So no. For it to be 100. It is. And the fact that... There are so many more things for us to talk about. We mm-hmm. haven't even scratched the surface. Right. Like we've talked about, you know, a lot of neutral things in mamahood and of mm-hmm. course some specific, you know, areas of mamahood that are, right. you know, unique to people's circumstances. But mm-hmm. there are so many things that we have left to talk about. Right. And I can't wait to see what the next one hundred episodes look like. I know, two hundred. Uh, yeah. Then we'll be, <laughs> the next two hundred we Okay. <laughs> Okay, but like it seriously, and and the fact that we, you know, a good eighty of these episodes, we were out here grinding mm-hmm. with just me and you. Yeah. Um. But now that we have our SC Media Group family to right. help us grow this podcast right. into everything that it will become, I'm happy that we now have our family here to really support us in that space. Yeah. So it's absolutely. gonna be lit. I'm ready. Yeah. So with all of that, we need to introduce ourselves. <laughs> we so <do. laughs> if this is your first time listening, I'm your host, Devin. And I'm your host, Kendra. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Real, Real Mama, Mama Pod. Pod. We are so happy to have you. And guess what? For our 100th episode, mm-hmm. we have a review. So <laughs> I love y'all for that. Thank you. Because I was uh-huh. like, please let us at least have one review for uh, our 100th. We got to do it for the 100th. <laughs> um, so this one is, it's, it says amazing. Okay. Five stars. Okay. 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 LJE 87 cuz I don't even know how I no, think yeah okay. I think I think All it's right. LJE <laughs> 87. Thank you. Yes. I'm not shading. I just didn't know if that was like a word or initials or whatever. But anyway, amazing show and discussion. Definitely give it a try when you have an opportunity. Okay. Thank yes. you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Give us a try because we got real stuff yeah. that to, Look, you to only share. Need to listen to one episode and then you'll be hooked. So Yeah, start yeah, with episode 1. If this is your oh, first time listening, you start with episode one. Yeah, okay. I mean, let this get the context, like the so our you why for starting do this. The whole one hundred. I mean, go pick one that you like, <laughs> but when you pick that, you're gonna want to go back you're to episode binge. one. That's yes. fair. Yes, that's fair. Yes, we got some people who are actually binging now. So yeah, that's true. We appreciate you them can tell that. too because it's like when we look at our numbers, like oh yeah, somebody. Yeah, binging. Right, so. yeah. Um, that's cool. Okay, so. We've been getting a lot of DMs, a lot of emails, a lot of questions, a lot of text messages asking about friendship. Mm -hmm. Um, So we thought for our 100th episode, it'd be cool to talk about friendships, the Mm -hmm. ins and outs of friendships, how friendships Mm -hmm. may have changed throughout motherhood, how you grieve friendships, how to make new friends. Yeah. All of that. So we're going to dive deep into that. So I hope you're ready. <laughs> we're going to go on a deep dive. Yeah, we're not going to play a game today. You know, usually we play a game, but I think we need to really reserve oh, yeah. space and time for this because I feel like sometimes it can be a little long-winded when you're talking about friendships because mm-hmm. it's not like one size fit all. That no, makes no, 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 no. They're not a one size fit all for so, sure. We're going to get into it, okay? <laughs> so my first question for you is what does friendship mean to you? <sighs> That's a very loaded question. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think friendship is, man, and, and the, the crazy thing is it's hard to answer that question mm-hmm. because, like, while you have friends, you've never really thought about, like, the true definition mm-hmm. of what it is. Uh, but to me, friendship is all about connection. Mm-hmm. You, you know I'm about vibes. Yeah. The vibes got to be there. <laughs> um, and I'm very tactful on how I approach friendships, like, I'm not just going to be friends with anybody. Yeah. Like, I can be cordial and social and amicable with most any person. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it comes to a true connection, like, I got to fill you out. Yeah. And y'all know, again, I'm all about the vibes. I'm going to watch. I'm going to learn. I'm going to watch how you treat others. Mm-hmm. Uh, because how you treat others, I really believe, is how you will treat yeah. me in return. Um, so friendship, to me, is about that connection. It's about how you treat others. It's how you treat yourself. 
Uh, because if you don't love yourself, you don't, you ain't gonna love me, yeah. you know? And, and I, I just, especially at this point in life, I don't have the bandwidth mm-hmm. to be in friendships with people who I don't see as, or that fits my definition of what a friend is. Yeah. Um, so if that connection is not there, if that vibe's not there, if you are not loving yourself in this space, um, and, and really being true, honest, and authentic, then that's not what I define as a friend. Yeah. So I know I said a whole lot of things. I hope whoever's listening can group all that together <laughs> and say this is what Kendra defines as a friend. Uh, but just the high level, it, good connection, honest, and authentic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think honesty is key in a friendship. Mm-hmm. Um, being able to be yourself. If I have to always be put together to be your friend, mm-hmm. you know, don't accept the ugly parts of me, then, um, yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to rock well. Because mm-hmm. it's a lot that comes along with life. And, um I can't do the like judginess. Like I can't, oh, I would never, or, you know, looking down on mm. me or thinking you're better than me or things like that. If it's a competition, like I'm not in competition with my friends at mm-hmm. all. Like if you're winning, I'm winning and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that is a uh, key to a friendship, just being honest and not like you'll be surprised how many people like lie about dumb stuff yeah and it's like that's a turn off for me mm-hmm. like if you lying to me girl like or boy because we do have close guy friends mm-hmm. um but they don't typically lie we're not <laughs> it's different <laughs> it's a little different it's different um, it's different but in particular just lying about things and not showing up and i think showing up looks different i think we need to kind of talk about that because the way I used to show up for you 10 years ago is different from how I show up Absolutely. to you now because kids like it just changes things right so being able to be judge free in that and just know my heart like you know if you know my heart you know if I could do it I will absolutely if I can't do it I won't because I just can't and it's not because you don't want right? to you just, just I literally can't. cannot I can't because I usually try to make a way if I can do it so again that honesty piece to me is very important mm-hmm. um but yeah I think I agree with you with all the other things that you said yeah a friendship and what it means so at this point in life like friendships are Good friendships are, are hard to come by mm-hmm. because you, you meet people young in life. Yeah. Um, and at that point, everybody's your friend. Yeah. You know, even if they act like an associate, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, this is my friend. Mm-hmm. This is my friend. This is my friend. Um, but as life continues to life and you get older and you're more mature and you've lived a little longer, mm-hmm. it's like everybody isn't really your friend. Yeah. It's like they're cool mm-hmm. and you don't dislike them yeah. and, and who they are as a person. But who they are as a person may not mesh with who you really are as a person. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's French. There, that's a whole that's a very layered conversation. Yeah, for sure. And I think, too, um, sometimes friendships have seasons. Oh, yeah. Especially for me as a military spouse, I move every two to three years. So I may be really close to somebody mm-hmm. at one point in time for a two year span. And then I move. And it's not that I love you any less. It's just that things have changed. Yeah. Right. Um, and so we may still be connected, but we may not be as close. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's kind of hard to deal with sometimes. Um, because not that I'm not close with you or don't want to plan things with you or don't want to do things with you. I just can't, you might be far away from me now. Right. Right. When we were living up the street from each other or whatever the case may be. So it's really considering that as well. Yeah. And like I said, as we age, Mm -hmm. friendships look different. Yeah. The amount of friends you have is not as much as you had when you were 19, 20 yeah. years old. It's more of a quality over quantity for yeah. me at this point in life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And just setting boundaries now. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I feel like before I'd never really set boundaries. And mm-hmm. now it's like, okay, like I'm not saying you have to show up for me for every single thing, right? But if I'm constantly showing up for you and you're not really showing up for me and mm-hmm. I'm pouring into you, but you're not necessarily pouring into me, I'm going to pull back. Oh, like, yeah. Like just... It's just like, it's okay. It's cool. It's no love lost. I don't love you any less, mm-hmm. but I just know how to maneuver. I know how to operate and I respect the boundary that you've placed. Absolutely. So. Because boundaries, yeah. right? Right. So I let, let's, let's continue to go down because we'll, <laughs> we can just keep talking right. <laughs> about this without addressing all the questions. Right. Um, so 
when you think about us being mamas now, mm-hmm. like we all, we've said that, you know, friendships have kind of shifted. They've had their seasons. Yeah. Um, but now that you're a mom, you feel like your friendships have kind of shifted in a way or like what what does that look like for for you absolutely um i think being a mom and a military spouse my friendships always shift right Mm -hmm. um and now i'm finding that i'm becoming friends with like drew and jay's friends moms Mm -hmm. right some people have been actually really cool like i'm like oh we can definitely kick it some people it's more like okay i see you here and that's the extent of that Mm -hmm. um so yes i do i think sometimes when you're the first or the earliest in your friend group to have kids your other friends don't necessarily understand until they get there oh yeah right um so you lose friends that way um you lose friends who um Kids may be older because they're doing different things. Yeah. They kind of move on and things like that. So you lose friends that way. And again, no love lost. You're just in different seasons. And so sometimes it's easier to connect with people who are in the same season as you. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think it's definitely changed. Um, and I'm finally okay with that. Yeah. 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 I, I think since having i know for me since i've had eli Mm -hmm. i just my brain does not function the way that it did pre-eli um and given that the bandwidth and Mm -hmm. the capacity that i have to deal with certain things i'm just choosing not to deal with it if i don't have to um so that means i'm more um particular about my boundaries you know if i can't do something although uh, i I would love to to support and, and be the great friend I was before, not saying that I'm not a great friend now, but my priorities have shifted. Mm -hmm. And if you are my friend at the core, whether you have children or not, um, I would assume that you would understand that, Hey, your life looks a little different than what it did before you had your child. Mm -hmm. Um, so I understand that while I may not understand exactly what you're going through, I understand that you have some things going on, Um, and I'm going to support you in that season and it support may look a different way. Yeah. Um, so in that, I, friendships have shifted. Mm-hmm. I'm not, um, as social as I used to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's not because I don't want to, mm-hmm. but sometimes I don't yeah. <laughs> because l- being a mom, it really takes a lot out of you. It does. Um, being a wife plus a mom mm-hmm. takes a lot out of you. Yeah. Um, just like when you get married, mm-hmm. you know, you don't, you're not out here in the streets like you were kicking it yeah. with your girls before you got married. And yeah. and that's another season that, you know, things had to shift. Mm-hmm. But again, tying on the title of mama now, it's like, well, damn, like yeah. there are a lot of responsibilities that come with being a mom, yeah. especially at a young age. So and when, I, when I say young age, I mean your kid being young. Mm-hmm. They're your responsibility 24-7. Yeah. You don't have time for yourself. Yeah. And I'm at this space where now if I if I have some alone time or if I can, I just want to be by myself. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that I don't want to be with my friends, mm-hmm. but I need to sit with me for a little bit. Yeah. Go to work all day, deal with people mm-hmm. and their personalities. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you go home, you deal with your partner and right. their personalities mm-hmm. and their needs. Then you deal with your kid who got all the needs and got all the personalities and got all the crazy shit going on. Like Mm -hmm. there's just a lot that you have to pay attention to and be mindful of all day. Right. And it's like, when can I rest? Yeah. And when I can, I just want to be by myself. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't love you, even if it's for a few minutes. Yeah. But if I even need a weekend Mm -hmm. or a day. Yeah. Just, I, I love you, friend, but I I really just need you to understand mm-hmm. that I need this time for yeah. me because yeah. I'm tired. Yeah, I'm tired. Tired. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. Did you ever have to end a friendship? And end. You, yeah, end. Did you ever have to end a friendship? Hmm. I wouldn't say end mm-hmm. because most of the people – that I've been friends with, I'm still friends with Mm -hmm. them. Um, But I have had to adjust the way that I friend Mm -hmm. certain people. Mm -hmm. Um, I, again, am at this point in life where I have set hard boundaries. And I'm one of those people where I'm going to give you what you give me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not always the best course of action. Um, But I'm not going to pour into relationships that are not pouring into me Mm -hmm. 
I don't have the time for that. Yeah. I've never been that type of person, mm -hmm. really. But now that I have a child, mm -hmm. I'm really not that type of person. Yeah. It's like, I, I'm giving you what you're giving me. If right. you're loving on me, you're pouring into me. I'm a Libra, so I'm very fair. Yeah. It's like, I'm not going to give you less than what you give me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you more than what you give me either. Yeah. You know? So I have had to not necessarily end friendships, but I've had to adjust the way that I friend certain yeah. people. Um, but I made sure it was clear to those people that I am adjusting our friendship because of X, Y, and Z so that we're on the same page. Yeah. There is no gray with me, black or white. This is what it is or this is what it's not. Yeah. So, yeah. What about you? Yeah, I don't think I've ever ended a friendship, but they just change kind of or let go. Right. It's just like, OK, well. It's not that I'm intentionally not talking to you. It's just like, again, if, mm -hmm. if I'm reaching out to you every time to check on you, but you're not necessarily reaching out to me to check on me, mm -hmm. then I'm going to stop reaching out. Yeah. But if you need something, let me know. Hit me up. I'll try to help as much as I can, but I'm not breaking my neck for somebody who doesn't necessarily break their neck for me. Um so yeah, I would have to agree with you. Mm -hmm. on that. I never really like. Oh, we can't be friends no more. I don't mess with that girl. Blah blah blah. You can't be her friend. Right. Like, that's never happened. Um, but there has been a shift in the priority of how I treat you or show up for you. Yeah. 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 No ending. It's just this is this is what it is. Yeah. And so, I'm okay with that. You know. Yeah. So what's your friendships changing? Did you grieve those people? grieve mm -hmm. um is that part of the friendship because what if you were talking to them almost every day at one point and now you talk to them mm -hmm. when you talk to them honestly i f i think the grieving was happening before mm -hmm. the the full conversation of this is this is where the shift is yeah um and these are just sure signs like you you can tell when a friendship is kind of shifting yeah there are, are signs, symptoms, <laughs> what are side effects? <laughs> you know, there are things that happen that show you that, hey, this yeah. friendship is, is shifting a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and you know me, I'm a visual person. Yeah. I'm acts of service. So mm -hmm. literally how you treat me, mm -hmm. how you're servicing me as your friend right. is I'm going to take that as, okay, this is what it is. Right. So if I see that there are shifts in behaviors, the way we interact with each other, how we talk to each other, what we do with each other, how consistently we hang out or not, mm -hmm. you know, those are sure signs to me. Mm -hmm. So that grieving is through action for yeah. me. So it's like when we've gotten to the point where the shift is here, the grievance has already happened for me. Yeah. I've accepted where it is and this is what it is moving forward. And I'm at that point, I'm okay with the decision. Mm -hmm. um, so the grieving for me is more so during the shift versus after, if that makes sense. Okay. What yeah. about you? I feel like it's a little bit of both because sometimes I'm like, oh, dang, I need to call that person or check on them. And I'm just like, oh, we kind of set this boundary or this cadence, right? Mm -hmm. like, not that I'm trying to be spiteful, but it's just like you're you're not that person anymore, right? So right. it's just like getting used to not having that person, especially if I don't talk to them in a while or whatever the case may be. It's kind of weird of how to move. You yeah. Know? Like, Ooh, or should I even share this with you? If we do, if we are catching up, like, it's just like, it's weird. Yeah. Um, so I can say I probably grieved it a little bit during and after. Mm -hmm. um, or if something happens and I'm like, oh, no, I need to really be there for that person. It's like, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Because now you have a different place in your life. Yeah. Um, as they do for me, too. Um, so it's just kind of weird. Yeah. Because you do kind of miss them, too. It's like, oh, I miss the fun times or the good times we had. Yeah. Um, but also, I know I have to keep this up for protection of me. Yeah. So. Because, and it's okay. If, if, if you have friends that, you know, you the, the relationship has shifted a little bit, mm -hmm. it's okay to still say, hey, girl, you came to mind just checking on you, make sure yeah. you're good. And that's it. Yeah. You know, it's like, and of course, within that conversation, if there's some follow-up needed just mm -hmm. to say, hey, I'm checking on you. That's fine. That's what being a friend is, yeah. period. Whether yeah. we are best friends or we're just close friends because, yeah. you know, we got all these categories mm -hmm. or if we're just a so whatever. It's yeah. OK to just say, hey, just checking on you. Or if you saw something on social media and it's like, dang, I wonder, I hope they're OK. It's OK to say, hey, I mean, you put it on social media. Yeah. So you want somebody to know about it. Yeah. Just checking on you. You good. Yeah. Um, 
but I, I, I really, I hear you. It's hard to navigate that. Yeah. It really is, especially if you've always been that way of like, I'm checking on you good. We've talked about this all the time. And yeah. now it's just like, huh, we're not really there anymore. Right. So it is hard to navigate. Yeah. You kind of mentioned this a little bit, but what is some signs of a shift happening, mm. of a change happening? What are what are Ooh. some, I guess, red flags? I'm going to give you some signs that I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Um, or experience. <laughs> or experience is right. So for me, when I'm I'm an all-in or out person. Yeah. I'm black or white. Yeah. It's either we here or we there. Yeah. Um, so if if I'm at a place where I have to figure out, like, oh, like, this is going on, and I didn't know about it, yeah. you know, what's up yeah you know so it's like are we are you can't invite me to certain things mm -hmm. like it's either and of course i understand that certain audiences yeah. for certain things let me yeah. be very clear about that <laughs> i'm not trying to go everywhere and do everything <laughs> but if there are spaces that you know i once occupied mm -hmm. and the next week it's like oh well i'm not why am i not occupied in that space right now or what right. was What's, what's up with that? I don't have time to be yeah. sitting here trying to figure shit out. Yeah. I, I really don't. I'm not, a, I'm not problem solving in that way. Right. My problem solving skills are shifted elsewhere. Right. So that's why, <laughs> again, I don't have time. Like my friends, I need my friends to be right. my friends. So um, if, if we're at a space where I'm really having to figure out and, and say, dang, well, what, what's up with this? And what's up with that? Then that's a sure sign for me. Right. If I got to do a whole damn you know, really, well, why, what's good? No, uh -uh. Yeah. no, 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 no. So it is, is this or yeah. is that? Mm -hmm. Black or white. Right. This is Ken, mm -hmm. the Libra, <laughs> black or white. No gray, yeah. no gray. I don't have time for that. Yeah. So um, that's one sign. But also, the, the people that don't open up, like, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an open book to an extent. Yeah. So I, I get, you don't share all your business mm -hmm. with everybody. Mm -hmm. But for the people that's like, you know, they're just sitting there listening to everybody. Mm -hmm. They ain't got shit to contribute to the conversation, but listening to everybody's business mm -hmm. and they tea, mm -hmm. uh-uh, yeah. don't need to be in my circle. Yeah. Because what are, you, what are you doing with this information? Right. To the fact where you're not even sharing things about mm -hmm. yourself, too. Mm -hmm. So um, th that's another sign. Yeah. It's like, I, I just... I ain't got time for all that. Yeah. That's why I got my core. Mm -hmm. I got my two best friends, you and Brandy. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all I need. Yeah. But I also have my girls. You know, I, I, yeah. I got yeah. a, other yeah. close friends. Yeah. But I, I just, there are just certain things with certain people that I do. Yeah. And I just know who my best friends are and I know who my good girls are. Yeah. You know, so, yes, those are. <laughs> Mm -hmm. we can talk about this shit all yeah. day but um, go ahead what's your response to that question I feel like some red flags are definitely like i said earlier lying mm -hmm. um just why are we lying to each other at this big old age like it's no need it is what it is yeah right? playing games yeah like i'm not your man i'm not trying to chase you i'm not trying to lock you in <laughs> like if you don't want to do something don't do it Mm -hmm. Or like picking and choosing what you decide to show up to. Yeah. Um, like, or invite me to. Like don't pick and choose. Either you one side or the other. And let's keep it consistent. Right. Keep it consistent. Because I'm going to let you lead the way. And I'm going to follow the way you lead. Mm -hmm. um, because I can I can this is a downfall to me. I'm very inclusive. I want everybody to do everything. Kumbaya. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, very inclusive. Like pe people feeling left out. That's just my personality. Yeah. Um, and I've been like that since a young kid. I don't know if it's because I'm part of a big family. Mm -hmm. How I was raised. There's I've nothing wrong just, with that for you. Yeah, but some people do not like that about me. Um, but yeah, if you want to leave me out of stuff, like the day you leave me out of something is the day you get left. Like <laughs> it's just, it's that yeah. simple. Or you consider yourself a, a friend, a good friend, and you intentionally like come to the city I am, and you don't say anything. Mm, mm -hmm. Even if we can't connect, I feel like if you are a good friend to me, you say, hey, girl, I'm in town. My sister lives in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'm here every six weeks, and I don't see her every time. My niece lives here. I have family here, mm -hmm. but the recording schedule is so hard, right? Mm -hmm. But I let them know, hey, I'm here. I'm recording. I probably won't be able to see you, but still want to let you know that. Mm -hmm. Vice versa. Like, mm -hmm. I, certain things I expect if you call me friend. Right. 
you know um so and people i'm close to mm -hmm. i will every now and then be like because they know they know what's up already i already told them beforehand right but like don't intentionally come somewhere and then don't share Just don't. that information and then like put it on your stories or something like that i'm like okay well i know where i fall <laughs> i know right. where i fall now and don't come and expect me right to share with you and i know it sounds very petty but these are the things that start this boundaries. To, yeah, it start and it's like, okay, now I know how to move. It's no shade. I don't love you any less. I just know I don't have to do that for you anymore. Right. And that's okay. That takes a little weight off me. Yeah, exactly. You know? So it's like it's okay that this is how we're gonna move. Yeah. So it is what it is. Yeah. And we're all Koshi. We're Gucci. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're Gucci, we're Gucci. Yeah. So when we think about our friendship, and mm -hmm. then just even the the other the friends. I'm not gonna say the other friends. No, <laughs> no. the friends that we have. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think it's hard, specifically yeah. for, for women, to make new friends? Like it, girl. Wh why do you think trauma, it's hard? Like drama. Like let's be for real. Yeah. And I know this is like a stereotype, but women keep up drama, and nobody has time for that. So many people have been burned mm -hmm. because of malicious things. We can be mean. Women can be mean. Period. Mm -hmm. Like. I'm not saying I'm perfect. Like, I've been mean before, you right. know? Um, but it's like, now you have to build that up with somebody else, build somebody else's trust. Maybe you do share their secrets, and maybe they weaponize it against you. Like, you don't want to go through that. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand why it's difficult to make new friends. Like, yeah. it's hard. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. And you have to get to know somebody all over again. You have to know what pisses them off, what makes them happy. What It's just like... Finding a new partner. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Who got time for that? Right, exactly. Nobody wants to do that. that. No, I agree. Uh, it's just friendships are work. Mm -hmm. It's not just, oh, Mary Pat. If you want to build a true and genuine friendship, that takes work. Yeah. And I think that's also part of the reason why it's hard for women to make new friends, especially if they have the titles of mom yeah. and life partner to yeah. somebody. Like, that it's that's already working right. itself so having to build a new friendship mm -hmm. is more work for me yeah and it's not that you don't want yeah. the friends yeah. it's like you like people but yeah. it's a lot of work yeah and learning personalities yeah. and how that it takes a lot of mental and physical Energies, energy all of that yeah. yeah so i think that's one reason um and <laughs> it's to me it, it's establishing friendships with guys mm -hmm. are just a little easier yeah. because guys are, are real chill yeah, for, for the most part. Yeah. All guys aren't. So yeah. Let me be clear. Um, but it's just, it's different. Yeah. They don't care. They, be, they, they be don't. Chill. I think they too, don't. sometimes what makes it difficult, you get wrapped up in your own life, your own cadence, your mm -hmm. own every day. It's like, I don't have time for new friends because especially if you and your partner are friends already, sometimes it's easier, but sometimes you do want to just go out to brunch with, you, with your girls. Yeah. Or with some girls, especially if you're outnumbered in your house like us, it's just we're surrounded. All by males, males, Even the dog, <laughs> right? So it's just like sometimes <laughs> you don't want that energy. Yeah, like you know, you want to get dressed up and get cute and not be in sweatpants and sneakers all the time and a, a yeah. top knot bun because <laughs> that's the life you live in, right? You, know? you got to stay so, ready for right, whatever, exactly, the, whatever you know with these boys. Um, so I think sometimes we can get comfortable in that and it makes it harder to like venture out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that this, again, at this point in life, who got time for that? <laughs> <laughs> who got time for it? <sighs> go, go Oh, ahead. I thought you was going to say something. No, but, I'm good. Um, go ahead. So why do you think we work as friends? <sighs> I think we have an understand. Mm -hmm. Like we've been friends for... I've keep, I can't I think keep it's going on 17 years. However long you and me and Jared, you and me and Jared, me and Jared, no. Years. However long you and Jared yeah. have been together. <laughs> I can never be together. How, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> um, <and> no. <laughs> However long <laughs> you and Jared have been together is how yeah. long we've been friends. Yeah. I think we work at, as friends because we share a lot of the same beliefs when it comes to friendship. Mm -hmm. Um, we pour into each other. We yeah. respect each other as friends and as women. Mm -hmm. um, we we treat each other how we want to be treated. Yeah. And we understand that. It's yeah. not like I got to, Devin, you did this to me. And I don't, we, yeah. no, we don't, we don't have to do all of that. We love the same stuff. A lot of shared interests. We just vibe. Yeah. We get it. You know, yeah. we kick it. 
I don't have to sit here and navigate stuff with you. It's right. easy most yeah. of the time. Yeah. <laughs> and then even, even if you do do so, I'll just call you out or vice versa. If I do something, you'll call me out. If you do mm-hmm. something, and it's just like, sometimes when we're in group settings, we have to explain that to people because I'll be like, girl, what? And then they be, I'll be like, no, this is how, this is how we, we talk, talk to, to each other. other. It is what it is. We are not disagreeing. We're not fighting. It's just... I don't have to sugarcoat anything. No. And that just makes it so much easier because, like I said, going back to knowing my heart. Like, mm-hmm. you know I don't mean no ill intent. And if I ever offend you, you would tell me, like, girl, you need to pipe down. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. I'll be like, are you okay? What's wrong with you? What's your attitude? <laughs> right. Um, so, and it could be, girl, I'm on my cycle. Or whatever. Or we already know. You on your period? Right. <laughs> like, it's like, she on her period. Right. Just it's don't wrong, pay her no right. mind. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, I think that mutual understanding Mm-hmm. And knowing that we would never do anything to hurt each other. Mm-hmm. And it's nothing somebody can say to me about you. I mean, I've never even experienced that because it would be checked at the yeah. door. Yeah. Like, I think that is just like, oh, I know I can't go between them Same. two. Same. Like, there's uh-uh. been a lot of quote-unquote <laughs> friends out here that become telling me stuff. I'm like, one, is confidential. I'm not one of those people that share and people know that I do. If you tell me something, that is it. It mm-hmm. ends there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just like, ain't this your best friend? Right. <laughs> like, wait, what, why do it's I know like, this? like, don't ask me nothing no. about Devin because yeah, you, you ain't getting gonna, it out of me. You ain't going to no, Mm-mm. no, no, and no. So you go. And if you asking me, you need to go just ask her yourself. Right. Right. <laughs> just go straight her. to the source. <laughs> right. Because I'm not telling. Like uh, such and such has something to tell you or ask you. You want to call her? Anyway. And we've always been that way. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's always been that way yeah. since we were in college, even, you know, yeah. we, we have, me and Devin have been friends for a very long <laughs> time. So it's like, don't try her. Yeah. Don't try me. Cause yeah. it ain't going, yeah. that ain't going to work out. And I think sometimes uh, we have like this overprotectiveness of each other. So mm-hmm. somebody may try me and I'll let it slide, but you won't mm-hmm. and vice versa. Oh yeah. I'm like, don't talk to her like that. <laughs> <laughs> but then they can talk to me like that. I'm like, no, it's fine. Like uh-uh. they didn't mean. I, I'm like giving them grace or whatever. But if they try no. you, I'm like, who are you talking to? Right. What did you? You need to apologize, especially in college. Yes. <laughs> We're um, our example. <laughs> oh lord. So me and Devin Young, right? <laughs> young We've done young. it's still a couple things, but I'm gonna give y'all this one example. <laughs> so me and Devin, we were out at a party. Um, it was something called a champagne sip. Mm-hmm. This was back, you know, when. You know, fam, you, we turned up the fam. <laughs> um, it's a party where literally, like, all, they hand you a bottle of champagne as yeah. you walk in the door. Like, yeah. and that bottle is yours. Yeah. So people are, like, toe champagne up. Champagne get you messed up. Like, anyway. toe, and I say toe up, I mean, like, no R-E at the end, like, toe <laughs> up. And this girl, like, she walked into Devin and, like, bumped the shit out of her. And I just, I didn't like that. Like, yeah. it, it really almost, because she, Devin was a little skinny mini <laughs> back then. So she skinny. almost knocked her over. <laughs> and I'm like, hell no. Like, she, you know, right. young and dumb. <laughs> she gonna bump you like that, friend. Like, so she's drunk. She's, she's, she's drunk. And I'm like, no, so are we. So <laughs> are we. So I went up to the girl no, and I tapped her. Up. I, that wasn't that that wasn't the march it was no, another you march stay marching up on people you <laughs> marched up to her i was like I, I i did but i still tapped i politely tapped her i did not like you know um i said hey you you bumped into my friend and so she looking at me like what you want me to do i'm like you need to say sorry to her <laughs> and she said i'm sorry and i'm like all right let's go friend like this that's it like just don't be bumping into my friend like that Definitely and don't say nothing to me. her yeah. yeah no no like that's just courtesy good manners <laughs> How your mama raised you? <laughs> anyway, you silly girl. So yeah, child. Um, yeah, that's one of many stories. Y'all hear those throughout the podcast. <laughs> we be here all day about the things we have done for each other over silly oh, things. Oh, uh, uh, we ain't okay. gonna talk about everything. Yeah, we're not. No, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this was good. This is a good way yeah. to mark a hundred. Hundred yeah. years to kind of reflect on our friendship, mm-hmm. to kind of talk about friendship in general, and it's okay if you're that mama who's grieving that friendship. Like it's hard. We get it, but just try to make new friends. I know yeah. that's easier said than done. And then we all have some tips about that later on in mama's. Corner. And you never know the friends that you may have grieved. They may come back in your life. Mm-hmm. You never know. Yeah. 
a seasons, yeah, seasons, right? Seasons. seasons for sure. And I welcome those people with open arms. Oh yeah. Yeah. And know your friend too. Like me and my other best friend Mimo, we've been friends since I was 14. Right. Mm-hmm. So our dynamic is a little different. Like we are literally, she, we're tied into each other's families. Yeah. So even though we don't talk every day, because one, that's not her personality. And I don't take that from her. Yeah. She's not a texter. She's not, you know, that it's like, <laughs> it's like, where's Mimo? Like, where's Waldo? Where's Mimo? Yeah. <laughs> but I know she don't love me. She's a free spirit. She's just out here. Okay. Mimo is a vibe. But she's, a great friend and I know she loves me it's nothing she won't do for me or my kids Mm -hmm. and so people like how does that dynamic work and I'm just like that's who she is like I'm not going to force her to fit in my bubble because I'm this way she she don't like she don't be on the scene she don't like the social stuff Mm -hmm. she just be living her life yeah and so just really understanding what your friend is and the type of friend you have don't try to force them to be what you want them to be yeah yeah because we're completely when you see me I mean tatted like Mimo yeah, is, y'all are different. <laughs> and, um, oh, but she, Mimo's but a vibe. That is my, like, best friend, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah. Um, I mean, outside of you, but just saying, don't, like, be okay with what you have. Yeah. And just make it whatever it is. Yeah. So. Same same with Brandy. I mean, well, me and Brandy are kind of still similar. Yeah. But, I mean, she, she lives in Texas. Yeah. I'm here, you know, and we are both, we both have kids right. very young. Me and Brandy talk almost every day. Mm-hmm. Um, but she has a very demanding schedule and so do I. Right. So it's like a, Hey friend, you good? Yeah. What's going on? Can I help you with anything? She does the same for me. Right. And you know, that's what it is. Yeah. We've been best friends since we were 14. Yeah. So it's similar to you and me, yeah. but, um, that's my girl yeah. and you, my girl, and those two yeah. don't, don't yeah. fuck with them. You Cause it's a friend. Like, no. <laughs> right. Uh, uh-uh. yeah. no, no, no. I'm no. also Mimo's voice too. I'm yeah. like, no. This is what yeah. we gotta do. <laughs> yeah, and then, isn't me more Sagittarius? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, Ooh, she, y'all fires. But she's she's a chill. Yeah, she's chill. But I feel like if Mimo, if you get her there, yeah, yeah. then it's no coming back. Yeah, it's no coming back. Okay. Once you done, you done. <laughs> um, uh, okay, well that was fun. It was. I'm glad we. I'm glad we have this friendship, friend. Yes, I'm grateful for you, child. You keep me grounded. <laughs> all right so mama juice Mm -hmm. so for those of you who are listening for the first time mama juice is my favorite segment of the show because if you get to know ken you know ken loves a good cocktail Mm -hmm. but surprisingly while we have an episode or a juice for for the episode um we're drinking water today Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna tell y'all why tell them Devin and i have been bulk recording for a whole weekend okay (laughs) Let's be, we're going to be honest here. So (laughs) we had, what, four, three to four episodes on Friday. Mm -hmm. We had three to four episodes on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Today is Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we having three to four episodes a day Mm -hmm. and we got a drink per episode. Yeah, we do. That's at least, at least six drinks. Yeah, and I'm a lightweight. At least. So six to eight drinks. Um, And we said... We gonna kick. We gonna chill today we gonna because we gonna hydrate, yeah. right? We need our water. Um, we do have a drink. It's a, like a peach bellini, mm-hmm. and we've named it the comrade because that's my this is my comrade, and I'm her comrade. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like a peach bellini. It has peach nectar, and you can top it with prosecco or sparkling wine or your dry shant, whatever you want to bubble with. Um, you can top it, top the peach nectar with that. Yeah. Um, but we drinking water today yeah. because. Uh uh-uh. uh, we are. ain't the young nineteen <laughs> right. year olds we met. You mean twenty one? You know, twi- we met when we, we were like been nineteen. Drinking at 21. I know you oh. was doing it before. <laughs> Don't act like it was just <laughs> first me. First of all, I follow the rules. You know, I didn't have my first drink until I was twenty one. That little surprise birthday party. Friend, you ain't never go to the juice parties. I didn't drink. You Remember, didn't, I was always the DD. I did not drink. You didn't have one drink no, at the juice parties. I did not drink. Okay. Well, I Ken have? did. Ken we know had you a did because a, a lot of times Ken. I had to go find Ken because she would disappear. <laughs> okay, put out an Amber Alert. Don't put my okay. business out yeah, on we the know. pot. <laughs> Anyways, Ken did, you know, at the juice parties, but it's okay. <laughs> um, but yes, we we had to we had to chill today. But we yeah. again, we do have a drink, and it will be listed in our description. And you can also look out for a video from our premiere pour guys. Mm-hmm. So let me let me also plug this. Um, Premier Pours is a luxury mixology company here in Atlanta, and they have been curating a good bit of our drinks this yeah. weekend. I, all of them, actually. Yep. Um, so I want to shout out Bruce and Demetrius from Premier Pours. They will have a video that will show how to make the Comrade, uh, but it is also known as the Peach Bellini. So look out for that. 
Hi, I'm Demetrius. And I'm Bruce. And we're Premier, Premier Pours. Pours. And we'll be your sponsor for this segment of Mama Juice. So, our drink of choice will be a peach bellini. Now, for a peach bellini, you want to have a champagne flute, preferably chilled. We have our peach nectar. We have our Prosecco. You can use any based on your choice. And for our garnish, we'll be using peach halves. So, the first thing you want to do is add in your peach nectar, like so. Thank you. And then you'll follow that up by topping it off with Prosecco, preferably to the side so you don't have air bubbles traveling to the drink and it gets really fizzy. And to end it all, you will add your peach slice as your garnish. That's amazing. And if you'd like to try this as a mocktail, feel free to swap the Prosecco out for your favorite sparkling water. And don't forget to tag us at home when you try this at Premier Pours Mixology. All, All right, right, back, back to, to the show. show. Um, but I did want to shout them out because yes, they have them. been hooking us up this week. And then week. also, if you're looking for like a private experience or something like that, book them. Oh, they're yeah. Amazing. They're very They're a vibe. They drinks hit. Because they know how to they make do. a drink for me. And me. Yeah, they make our drinks different. We're on a spectrum yes, of drinks. You sweet. When you were making the drinks, it didn't matter. You it's and Candy Land you poured and for I'm yourself, not. <laughs> it's what I got. Okay. Yeah. But they consider my light. They weakness, did. Well, okay? Fred, I consider you too. No, you don't. Yes, I you do. Might, you'll be all right. I'll half an ounce Sometimes. or two for you, Thank and you I'll add some extra damn simple <laughs> syrup because you like candy to drink. And they, but they really did yeah, know how to accommodate our yeah. palates. Because again, Devin is in Candyland, <laughs> and I'm over here with the citrus and the uh, sage and all the hard. Li- that's just yeah. yeah. So they, kudos to Demetrius and Bruce. Yeah. So our next segment is uh, Mama's Corner, and that is my favorite segment. So if this is your first time listening, this is your opportunity to um, connect with us. Um, Our listeners typically write in and ask us advice. Mm -hmm. We are no experts. So if advice don't work for you that we give you, like we didn't say anything, but if it works, (laughs) give us our credit, okay? Um, But again, we're no experts. We just talk from our personal experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel like for Mama's Corner, we should give some tips on how to make new mama friends. Okay. All right. So I have a few. You can add some if you want to. Okay. Um, but how to make new mama friends. Join. Now, be careful with this. I'm going I'm to say. <laughs> be careful. But join some mama groups on Facebook. Um, mm-hmm. And look into your local city. Like, there, I met some moms through Black Orlando Moms Group or whatever. Something mm-hmm. like that. But I actually went to a few de- events, and it was fun. Um, mm-hmm. So you can network. You meet moms in different areas of life. Mm-hmm. I met a lawyer, a doctor, all kind of stuff. So you never know what you might need. Not that I'm saying it's a give and take, but yeah. you can meet some cool people. Um, my next one is make friends at your kids' extracurricular activities. So I mm-hmm. met a, I have a friend in Orlando mm-hmm. from the kids' um, basketball league mm-hmm. and we've been going to church together jared and her husband uh get together and do stuff we don't have play dates the boys play well together mm-hmm. their dad is from pensacola so they have a lot in common small and world we be doing stuff now she listens to the podcast hey girl <laughs> um but yeah she's real cool she's real down to earth um and our boys get together and um get along well with each other and then mm-hmm. when they don't like it's not like oh my gosh i'm so sorry girl like he punched your kid in the eye or vice versa it's like they boys Mm-hmm. They be all right. They friends. Fine. You mm-hmm. know, you don't feel that judgment. Because mm-hmm. even though we're not supposed to, when our kid do something messed up to another kid, you feel bad. Yeah. So I mean, naturally, yeah. good manners. And not that you, I'm saying do I don't apologize. care, but if stuff yeah. happens, it's not like that. That guilt. It's like when Eli and the boys be tussling, whatever. It's just like they. Right. They all right. Yeah. <laughs> Attend community events. So mm. um, whether that's with your church or you see like we did some Easter egg hunt. I met some cool people there or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm always looking for ways to engage with new moms as well. So, mm-hmm. um, and then at the playground, strike up a, par- a conversation. Yeah, I think that's cute. You know. Yeah. Um, play dates at the. I've we've done that before. Like we met somebody really cool. Mm-hmm. Her son was actually on the spectrum, and she loved the way Drew connected with her son. Oh. And she was like, "Oh, can we be friends?" And I was like, "Of course." She's like, yeah. "I just love how gentle you're." son is with my son and that's i do want to shout out during this episode because mm-hmm. my baby he makes me so shout proud him out. i think he gets that from me like even mm-hmm. when kids are different he don't treat them as if they're different yeah like, he just sees people for who they are and find the good in them 
Um, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Drew is you. Yeah. Jay is Jared. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so she was really, you know, she was just like, wow, I love the way they connected. Can we play more? Can we get together more? Mm-hmm. So that was pretty cool. So you might be able to find a playground friend. Yeah. I have one more yeah. um, thing to add. So there are certain, um, d- depending on where you work, mm-hmm. there are some internal like resource groups. Mm-hmm. I know where I work, we have um, something that we call employee resource groups. Yeah. And um, two of my colleagues created a group called The Village. Oh. Um, and it's for um, co-workers who have children yeah. um, or if they have care, if they're a caregiver. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like a support group, essentially, uh, or a resource group, I should call it what yeah. it is, to support each other through mm-hmm. phases of being parents or being caregivers. I love that. Um, so I've met people i'm not you know i haven't called them friends yet, <laughs> but i've met co-workers who you know we have a lot of similarities yeah. and um we have talked about getting the kids together and things so see what your your job or your your network in that space may have available yeah, to create absolutely. relationships and friendships that's another thing your class group with them especially in daycare it's harder mm-hmm. when your kids are in uh, school oh, yeah. age but like mm-hmm. get together with those moms as well because oh yeah some play dates with we have done that too and invite them to birth. i know it gets expensive but when you're doing a birthday party just invite them Ooh. The kids. Yeah, them birthday the parties, they do they do <laughs> turn you, up. If you're that mama who do birthday parties. <laughs> yes. We're we're about to stop. We're done. Uh we're done. Uh, After five, uh, we're done for Jay for a while. For everybody in the house. No birthday parties. I gotta see. Yeah, I know you uh, I like you know, I like a little little get together. Yeah, but we'll I'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> see. We'll see. But yes, definitely my the, some of the the kids uh, moms, like classroom moms yeah. are actually pretty yeah, cool. They're pretty cool. They and get a little lit too. too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, if you ever have an advice letter for us, uh, you can email that to mama at the real mama pod.com. I check those emails, so please continue to write those. They make me so happy. <laughs> I always text him. It's like, we got something for Mama's Corner. <laughs> I'm going to plug this in, too. If yeah. y'all, is there, if there's a drink that you want to try or see on the Real Mama Pod, send it to Devin yeah. <laughs> in, in, uh, in Mama's Corner, and I can incorporate that yeah, in Mama Juice. That. Well, this was a great episode. Thanks it for was. being my friend. Uh huh, girl. No, I, I, I love you too, friend. <laughs> All right. Well, until next time, mamas. Bye. Bye.